Hi, my name is Christina. I'm your librarian here at Christina's Bookshelf, and today I am bringing you Open Seating by Mickey B. Ashling. This was given to me by Dream Spinner Press to give to you, so I just want to tell them thank you. The premise of Open Seating is that Seth, who is in a partnership with Mark for over 20 years, recently lost Mark. And by recently, I mean like two weeks ago. It was very abrupt. Seth was very shocked by it. When more details came out about Mark's death, Seth was very disturbed and just quite frankly, downright disappointed in the decisions that led to Mark's death. Since there's only been two weeks, Mark and Seth had saved for years to go on a cruise. They paid for it, but they kind of didn't get the refund package. So for Seth, it was either go on the cruise or stay home and wallow. And so he decided to go on the cruise. So he thought of Bryce, who was Mark's gym buddy. Um, I wouldn't call Seth and Bryce, like, friends at all. I would hardly even label them acquaintances. For the mere fact that Mark and Seth were together for over 20 years, and Bryce had only met Seth, like, a few times. I kind of... I loved that this is like the odd couple on a boat. Like there's nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. You're going to see each other and you're going to run into each other. So for that, it was a lot of fun. With Seth, he is a romance writer. So he's one of those eccentric people where he's stuck in his head all the time. And when he's looking out into the real world, he's not seeing the real world. He's seeing a world that he is creating on the go. And so he's very kind of naive to things. For a romance writer, I kind of want to call him a prude, but I kind of don't because he was in a relationship for 20 years and they kind of had their way with how they worked together and everything. But at the same time, Seth, you're kind of a prude. Bryce likes to play the very laid back guy, kind of go with the flow. He's let his past kind of dictate him into a commitment phobia man. He's got a grinder app on his phone and wherever he goes, He's updating that sucker because as soon as he can get some action, he wants to get some action and never from the same person twice. When seating starts like right at the beginning with the fantastic odd couple situation, right out of the driveway, they're kind of going at it right on the plane. As soon as they land some, it kind of takes like this icky situation to kind of bring them a little bit closer and for Seth to see Bryce as more of a human being than a plaything, and for Bryce to kind of see a little bit more inside Seth. It takes another kind of like, I wanted to say dumb thing for once again them to kind of come together. And these major events take place before they've even gotten on the boat for the cruise. So they're already doing some like deep, deep character building and they haven't even gotten on the boat. One of my favorite things in this story and I looked forward to every single one of these scenes was the dinners. They set with a very eclectic group. It kind of adds a little charisma and appeal to the story. The characters that are all sitting around this table and getting to know each and every one and how Bryce and Seth react to everyone and then how Bryce and Seth react to each other regarding everyone really deepened the plot. A lot of things happen in open seating that remind Seth of Mark or Mark's kind of demise. And I was really kind of fascinated watching Seth deal with each individual incident. And throughout all of this, Bryce, Mr. Commitment Phobe, is right next to Seth helping him deal with it. So they're both kind of pulling each other uh, in the same direction towards each other, but in like a unique path. Bryce is getting to know Seth and kind of his eccentricities. And like I said, He's very Mr. Naive, and he's kind of pulling him out and saying, Hey, you have se you're have you seeing the real world. This is it, and you need to pay attention. While Seth is over here, you know, getting on Bryce for, Hey, you're seeing the wrong side of the real world, and you need to kind of open it up, buddy. One thing I kind of felt left out on is there's a couple at the dinner table that they kind of see throughout the boat and everything, and it's a patron and his cougar wife. And... I felt like there was this great buildup and this great buildup, and I was just expecting something epic! And I was kind of let down. But at the same time, what happened was so frackin' spectacular. That wasn't too bad. I was like, okay. When I got to the end of the book, I was a little kind of depressed because I'm, I was seriously not ready to put Seth and Bryce back yet. I really, 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 really wanted to spend more time with them. And then I 
flip to the next page and lo and behold, there's gonna be another story. So I am now like super duper excited. I'm excited to tell you about open seating because I am excited to get to the next one open house. Open seating by Mickey B. Ashling is, is a really good story. He said before, Mark just died two weeks ago and I had a really hard time coming to grasps with um, Seth maybe possibly liking somebody else or even kissing and being involved with somebody else so early. But at the same time, she wrote it in a manner that I could follow and I could accept. There, I also enjoyed the bickering that went on between these two. Like I said, you're gonna get that odd couple feel and it's so much fun and just kind of invigorating. And I chuckled and I giggled and at some points I was flat out upset and I was mad and I was angry and I wanted just that epic adventure. I got something more demure and more beautiful and just and it let me savor more of the experience than a massive blow up. If you like what you've seen, be sure to leave me a comment and a like. Please also subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can stalk me in many different ways. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter and I will have the links for you. I love to converse and I love to talk about books. So be sure to stalk me and I am always willing to talk and take recommendations. If you have an ARC you'd like me to read, you can email me at the email address I will provide to you also. Open Seating, Mickey Ashling, Dreamspur Press, June 10th, 2016, and I give it four stars. Bye. Hi, my name's Christina, and I'm your librarian here at Christina's Bookshelf, and today I'm going to talk to you about The Bridge by Rachel Liu. This is published by Harmony Inc. Press, and I received this through NetGalley, so I just want to say thank you. Before I get started, I just want to point out that Rachel is a debut author, and that's one of my favorite things, is to find a new author.